right, so been watching more Ron Paul interviews on TV. It's great. They basically, when did you stop beating your wife? Um, no, they don't say that, but they're close. What is it? Um, yeah, Ron Paul, the racist crazy man. Right now, as I speak, I run a couple of message boards, just for fun. And uh, several people uh, have posted things on those message boards, and I haven't read everything in those messages. Pretty much the same thing with those uh, Ron Paul newsletters. And back in the old days when we used <laughs> paper documents, he wasn't the editor. They were published under his name. Lou Rockwell, you son of a bitch. I knew you had something to do with it. Um, you know, let slip <laughs> these things. Them black people sure is fleet-footed when they steal your puss. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, I just had a great party this weekend where there were uh, some other American Negroes there. I, we're on Maui, and then you want to talk about being minority here on Maui. It's a serious minority. But anyway, we were laughing about these things. Um, but yeah, right now, as I speak, there are message boards that I've put together that have posts on there, right? But at least, see, now in the modern day, the people that posted that stuff are responsible for the post. But it's my board, so technically I'm responsible, right? I'm the moderator. And there's stuff there that I haven't read. And I may or may not get to it because some of those posts, like, you know, too long, didn't read it. And that's the case. Now, uh, ultimately, who's responsible? I am. Ultimately, who's responsible? Dr. Ron Paul was, was ultimately responsible for the uh, letter, what was in those newsletters. But he didn't write it. He disavows it. And he says that these things are unconscionable. And they are. And again, um, there's no place in his voting record, there's no speech, there's no place anywhere that you can hear him say these crazy things, right, or these racist things, not necessarily crazy, racism is, <laughs> uh, and insanity are, are similar, but two different things. Anyhow, the idea being is that Ron Paul has definitely disavowed these things, and there isn't any other dirt they can get, so this is the one thing they're going to use on the guy that wants to try and kill the Fed, right? We're talking about all the money. Again, all the other stuff, we can talk about drug war and foreign policy and Iraq war and foreign aid and all that. The main thing is the, is the Central Bank of the United States. And all these reporters on TV, right? Now it's great, because watch these guys giving him a hard time. I mean, literally giving him a hard time. They're not throwing him any softball questions, right? Like they throw the other candidates. They're trying to give him, do you have any election ability? Hey, what about these newsletters? Hey, what about this? Hey, you know, um, we're, we've uh, rigged the polls because we're getting ready to steal the vote in Iowa, so we want people to think that only 50% or 56% of your supporters are going to come out, and uh, you know, as opposed to the other guys who have more and blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know, like, the turnout is not going to be so great because uh, Rick Santorum is surging now, and you're not the guy, and you're not, look, we've picked out a candidate for you. Look, we've picked out a You better like our candidate because we've picked out candidates for you. We don't like this guy, the guy that you like, right? The talking heads are doing their best, and they're doing what they're told, right? Who, who owns these guys? The central bank owns these guys, right? Our central bankers. Who owns the, the I mean, just look, it's 2011. It's not conspiracy theory. A very few people own the central bank. They are the same guys that own our media. They are the same guys that, right? So let's do just some simple math here. Let's say there's 700 people in our government that are responsible movers and shakers. And when I say 700 people, people are like, well, that's kind of high because there's only 535 in the Congress. And well, yeah, okay, those guys. But then what about all of our unelected people that are running around in the DEA and the FDA and the EPA and those guys? Okay. So, 700 times uh, 1 million, there's some easy math for you guys, that's $700 million. If we gave each one of those guys a million, some of those guys, not so cheap. They don't come that cheap. They won't get sold. They won't, it's, you know, they've inflated the money supply to the point where a million dollars doesn't buy as much as it used to. So, uh, let's kick it up to $100 million and do the math. Right? It's not, you know, it's only a few billion dollars. Right? Um, and none of those guys are asking for a billion dollars each, but some of them, like, uh, well, we won't name names, but, you know, you can take a look at their uh, amazing financial <laughs> success over the last few years and how they've gone from a few hundred thousand to, you know, 90 million, 93 million, 100 million, and so forth. So let's just take 100 million per guy. 700 guys. How much money is that? 
It's chump change, as it turns out. Even just one big oil company. Right? Cost of doing business. You know, our the approval rating of our Congress is 9% because the American people have figured out that these guys are corrupt, that most of them are bought and paid for, and then there's like, a, you know, a very few, not all of them, but there's a very few that can't be bought. Ron Paul's one of them. Now what are we going to do? Right? This crazy drug war that we've got on, we spend billions of dollars on prisons, and we know for a fact that incarceration is, you know, not as good as treatment. We know this. And these, these reports have been around for, for decades. And now, and like, take a look at Portugal. Oh, Portugal decriminalized. Look what happened to them. Did they have crazy rates of, of uh, rape and pillage, and did all their youth become drug users? Or did actually drug use go down? Just look, go, like I said, all the, the knowledge is available to you on the internet. You know for a fact that in Portugal they had had success with decriminalization. And other countries are starting to follow suit. United States? No! Because no, what, what about all that money that we use for building prisons? And what about all that, right? I mean, and that's the legal side. Then there's the illegal side, which we're all painfully aware of. How much money goes into that? Hmm. So, of course, they bring up the racism card. But it's it's time to put a guy like Ron Paul in office. Um, let's see. What about our, our foreign aid policy? Or what about, you know, foreign, his foreign policy being isolationist? Again, non-interventionalism is not isolationism. Simple. But all of this stuff pales in comparison to the fact that our Federal Reserve is bankrupting our country. And I, remember, I made this one video where I talk about, you know... $31 sale, and she's off for 10 years. Another guy got two pounds of marijuana, he's in for life. How many guys that have been, like, you know, corrupt and absolutely responsible for fraud and to the tune of billions of dollars, these bankers? Anybody in prison? How about even just prosecute? How about an investigation? They got Bernie. They got Bernie made off, right? <laughs> but, I mean... the. It's hundreds of billions of dollars in some of these mortgage frauds and mortgage scams. And these guys are walking, right? And who owns the White House right now? Who's all the advisors, all these financial advisors, right? These kink, right? Are they going to prison? Are they going to jail? Huh? Goldman Sachs, if you work for Goldman Sachs, that pretty much sounds like a get-out-of-jail-free card to me. These guys are ripping us off. They are looting our treasury. They are looting our country and... We are not prosecuting anybody. You got $31 a pot. You going away, though. Talk about Jim Crow. Maybe it's uh, the fact that the American people are starting to get a little annoyed and pissed off and that our government has forgotten who they govern. Because we can see it's one set of laws for us and another set of laws for them. And they can do billions of dollars in financial carnage and walk scot-free. Now, you want some change? You want it, right? And the, what are they going to say about that? Oh, he's a racist. Oh, his, his views are antiquated. Oh, his views are... Yeah, our Constitution is not antiquated. It's an enlightened document. And again, the one candidate that has consistently, for his entire career, used the Constitution as his guide is not the crazy uncle. Right? Our founding fathers were not crazy uncles. Our founding fathers were free-thinking men who understood liberty and justice for all. And they tried to come up with as much, you know, see as many eventualities as possible. And you know what? Those guys got it right 99.9% .9 of the time. Right? Saw their word clear. Ron Paul uses that as his guidepost. He's the only guy. And now they're trying to get it. They're getting ready to rip him off in Iowa. So you guys have better get it together over there so that you can do, you know, the poll watching and so forth because you have two parts to your rights, right? The one is the right to cast your ballot, right? And you can do that in secret or not. But most people want to do it in secret, right? I didn't care. I don't care who, you know, I mean, I know people know who I'm <laughs> supporting, but I got a lot of friends who are Democrats that's actually getting pretty humorous because I can tell that they're liking Ron Paul, but man, they can't say it on Facebook, they can't say it out loud, because they get crucified by their friends. Even though Obama, the indefinite detention signing man, has uh, finally, that was, you know, for some of them, that was just the last straw. Right? Can't support the guy with the D anymore. But they can't openly say, I want Ron Paul. So those guys, yeah, they want their votes cast in, in secret. But for those of us who don't care, 
The other part is, though, part two of your right to vote is the right to know that your vote was counted. Now, that means that b votes get counted not in secret, not by, you know, proprietary computer code from Diebold, that you know what happened with those votes. And people are starting to figure out that, yeah, there's vote fraud in the United States. Oh, my goodness. There really is. So better pay attention to what happens here in Iowa. Because what as that goes, so if they think they can get away with it there, they're going to try and get away with it again and again. All right. Ron Paul, he's your man. You, you've got, like I said, you've got one choice. You want freedom and liberty? You're honest to God. Have one choice. Don't fall for the smear campaign. And remember, the main thing is the central bank. All the money. Right. That free currency, probably be a good idea. But having a private corporation print our money for us and loan it to us at debt, and then say the solution to having too much problems with debt is to actually go into more debt, this is the crazy talk. Right, The one sane man is Ron Paul.